Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm David Goodo, and over there is John Lewandowski. Behind us, we're in mid-season form, but uniform-wise, no. <laughs> mm. Today has been a kind of a long day. Um, I, I've had some bad string of health luck today and some bad personal luck today, so John's been hurting all day, so we're yeah. just we're trying to be comfy. We're not going to run around and try and be all nice and Stiffy for you, but we'll do that next week. We promise. <laughs> right. uh, we'll be ready next week. We'll be in season form by end of next week. Uh, speaking of next week, Admirals Camp opens October 3rd. So uh, get ready for that, Admirals fans. The uh, Admirals preseason game is October 8th. Um, I know it's already October. It felt like yesterday I was covering the draft. Summer <laughs> just went woof. <laughs> All right. Why we're here. Why we're here. The Preds took on the Tampa Bay Lightning. Or as I called them, the Tampa Bay Admirals and Pre uh, Badger alums. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, because literally that's who I saw a lot of. Um, all right. So, John, do you have the statistics up? No. Okay, I got it. All right. Uh, Preds outshot the Lightning 30 to 31, or 31 to 30, sorry. Not mid season form yet, or season form, or pre season form. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, face offs were 54 to 60, or 54 to 46. Ugh, dang, my dyslexic eyes. Um, both teams went over on the power play. Preds were over two. Lightning were over four. Uh, penalty minutes were fifteen to eleven. Most of them eaten up by Matthias Ekholm and Corey Perry. <laughs> I'll get into more of that later. Uh, hits were thirty by the Lightning to twenty six for the Preds. Um, back when we had the uh, playoff or the uh, bubble, the the bubble, the uh, COVID bubble. By the way, congratulations, Milwaukee. You have been low, uh, 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 downgraded to low-risk COVID. Congratulations, Milwaukee. Um, uh, so that's breaking news in our area, actually, is that Milwaukee has been dropped to a low-risk COVID area. So it's that's there's some good stuff going on here, folks. Um, blocks were 12 for the Preds, 11 for the Lightning, 7 apiece on the giveaways. Scoring in the first is the Portland Winterhawk connection. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to call it because they were line mates and teammates for the Portland Winterhawks, Ryan Johansson and Nino Niederreiter. Uh, Nino Niederreiter on a breakaway goal with a beautiful saucer pass from Johansson right to the hand of Nino Niederreiter across the line, so it was a clean play. At the 16-15 mark of the first period, second period, boring. I literally mean that in the purest form. Neither team amounted to anything. The only thing that had anything in that period was the Corey Perry, um, Matthias Ekholm wrestling match, as I call it. Yeah. <laughs> um, that wrestling match got Corey Perry a five minute major, uh, unsportsmanlike conduct. Uh, yeah. Um, and then in the second period, or third period, the penalties were hooking for Spencer Stachny at Grant Mishmash. Alex Cohen interference on Cole Smith, which negated Spencer Stachny's penalty. Uh, Corey Perry cross-checking, Matthias Ekholm roughing. Um, it was pretty much a get out of here. <laughs> All right. Uh, shots in the per period were 10 to 8, um, Preds in the first, uh, 12 to 11 in the second for Tampa Bay, and 10 apiece in the third. Um, scoring the second goal of the game was John Lennard with an assist from Roland McEwen. Um, McEwen's really making a case for himself to play at the NHL level. Yeah. Um, He's a plus two in today's game. So far in the preseason, I believe he has a goal and an assist. If I remember correctly. 
So a lot to look forward to us as Preds fans. Now, Preds fans, if you um, have NHL Network in your office or if you where you work, if you get NHL Network, if you're uh, at home during 1 o'clock on Monday, um, they will be playing um, the uh, Nashville Predators versus, uh, I believe it is H.C. Burns. John, feel free to jump in at any moment while I make sure to double check on this. Uh, John, um, what were your thoughts on today's game? I mean, you know, we talked a little bit on the phone ahead of time, but. Yeah, it was a pretty defensive game all around. You know, early thoughts of Lankinen. That's another thing. What are your early thoughts of Kevin Lankinen? He's impressed me. Definitely really looked impressed. different than he was when he was in a Blackhawks jersey. Yeah. It, 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 is that maybe he's playing where he wants to play, or is it there's actual defense in front of him? It would be a little bit of both, but like I said, the defense has been really good um, that whole game. Today. Yeah, they. I mean, Cody uh, Cody Glass with that block shot off the off the skate off the bottom yeah. of the skate that didn't look like it felt good at all. No. And again, it's preseason and guys are blocking shots. This is what right. you see. This is for a chance to play in the NHL right now. Every guy's got a chance, equal slate. You know your guys who are a lock in. Anybody making over two million. Right. But you know, the locks, their roster positions aren't guaranteed all season. Right. So I I would really like to 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 take a look and see where where they end up down the line. Now I know, um, with the Admirals camp opening up on Monday, and you know I mean obviously it's going to be really hard to make a decision here because McCarron looked good, Parson didn't look good, Sherwood looked good, Leonard looked good, Smith looked good, uh, Jakowski looked good, Sanford looked good. I mean, it's you know uh. Uh, McEwen looks good. Stastny looks good. Gravel looked good from the shots he was taking. He was in the right position. I mean, it is really hard for 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 Nashville right now to make those cuts. Yeah, it is. On the flip side, let's take a look at what some Admirals alums did. Uh, PC Labrie, uh, Pierre Cedric Labrie, uh, former Milwaukee Admiral, uh, the twenties. 17, 18 season, if I remember correctly. Uh, minus one, uh, Grant Mishmash, former Admiral of last year, minus one, former Badger, Bill Elliott, uh, goaltender, went 29 thir and 31 for a 93.5 save percentage. Uh, backup goaltender in this game was Jack LaFontaine. Admiral fans were no stranger to him. All right. Um, but I, I really do mean this in the best form. Um, it, it, it is very difficult for Nashville to make these decisions. Now, the now the other question is, Ingram was the backup in this game. Right. He did not play at all. No. Does that say something? I don't think so. Does he, because he didn't play today, does he play tomorrow? I would assume so. I would assume he'd get the second half of the game and get juice going. Right. I, I mean, I guess that would be my assumption of it because you're going overseas. And there's only two games. There, there's this, and then, if I remember correctly, that is it. Because regular season starts. Oh, yeah. By the way, if you want, on Tuesday, you can check out the Sharks versus Eisenbauer. Um, they're playing a overseas game as well on NHL Network at two o'clock. So if you're into, if you're just a hockey fan like some of us are, like, and I'm not saying like that to be a Preds fan, you're not a hockey fan, but like just in the purest form of you like watching stuff you don't get to see all the time. These are opportunities to see players and overseas and and, and stuff like that. This, this is a really good showcasing of that. So I, I applaud the NHL for doing this. Right. 
So I, I really do. I am really proud of what the NHL has has accomplished. Um, because on I, I believe on from what I know, I believe the regular season opens up. The eighth. Not sure. So oh, yeah, I gotta do that again. I'm sorry, folks, if you see me sitting here typing like this, but uh John knows why. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, it's doing it again. Okay, so it runs to the eighth. The first official games of the NHL 23 regular season are between the Nashville Predators and the San Jose Sharks in Prague as part of the NHL 2022 Global Series. That is That is the earliest start that they have. After that, you have to wait until the 11th with the Tampa Bay Lightning take on the New York Rangers. Um, so we will we will see how that goes. But just a, a fair warning, we do start the season earlier than everybody else by almost a week. So our regular season roster has to be set by the time they leave Bern, Switzerland. Right. And go to Prague. Now, Switzerland's a very beautiful country. So is the Czech Republic. Um, I give all the credit. But I am going to say this. Um, as many of you are aware, Nashville Predators have been informed to keep their Russian players at home. I have heard no comments from the Nashville Predators or the league on this. I have heard comments from the Sharks saying it's all or none. So if the Sharks do have Russian hockey players that are going to make their roster, um, they're probably going to tell them to keep them at home. Now, I do not know what the Sharks roster at the current moment looks like, but I'm going to take a look just to be kind because I do have to ask myself this question. Is if Nashville got told this and the other team did not, Okay, one, two, three, Evgeny Svechnikov, four, they have four Russian players. Okay. If their Russian players are able to show up and ours are not, I will not cover this. It is not a fair assessment uh, of the leagues. And the NHL should pull out immediately. Because how is it? That, like, that is a question we do have to ask at this point. Is it fair that this is happening? It's not like these guys are military spooks or spies, as you know, they're called. You know, these guys are hockey players. They're there to do a job. They're pros. They know their goal job is to go there, build the name of the NHL, play hockey. Right. Anything outside of them that could cost them their roster spot, a job in the NHL, and a lot of money down the future. Because out of all... It is a contract year for Yakov Trenin. 
So to hold him out of two games is really unfair. All just right. based on where he's from. But if, you know, and that is, like I said, I have not seen an update from this, nor have I seen a comment from the NHL. Hang on a second. Breaking news as of four o'clock this afternoon. So, well, me and John were taking our pregame nap. <laughs> uh. The Czech government has dropped its accepted ban on Russian players on the base uh, on on the San Jose and Nashville rosters. Uh, Deputy Commissioner Bill Daly said that the move paves the way for Sharks and the Preds to travel to Europe. As both teams said that they would play games in Germany or Switzerland and they would be moved there if they didn't pull it. So the Czech uh, foreign minister said last week. Um, as, as we all know, the war in Ukraine is is bad we don't like to talk about politics on here but to take it into the sports world and to punish someone because of where they're from all right but not by how would they carry themselves or who they are or you know to judge someone on where they're from it, it's is bad and that's all i'm gonna say all right it's like judging someone on their skin color you don't do it I don't. If I don't know you, I don't judge you. It's not my place. And even if I do know you, it's not my place to judge you. So, right. <laughs> you know, it's, I can make assumptions, but judgment is not my job. So, um, I'm glad to hear that because, like I said, I was I, I, in the beginning of this. Had I known that this statement was put out, NHL, you know, that would be helpful. If you actually post your own storylines. Um, because that is a good. Th th here's the thing. The global series is a good thing for us. How many players overseas. Get to play in front of their parents. Right. You know. It, it, it costs money to travel. And, and a lot of it. From places like Switzerland. And the, and the Czech Republic. Where with players from there, these players' families will get to see them play in their, you know, jerseys in, you know, front of all these, you know, like right. Yossi said, Yossi's family's obviously seen him play. He makes more than enough money to make that happen. But Nino Niederreiter's grandmother has never got to see him play. And on Monday, this will be the first time ever that that gets to happen. And... You know, uh, kudos to the Preds for getting their free tickets, from what I heard. Yeah, kudos. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. But it is it is a good thing because I love seeing those good feel good stories. The feel good stories in sports are something that I hope never go away. Right. You know. Um, also, I wanted to wish my condolences to. Uh, I, I we haven't done a video in a really long time, so. I kind of forgot this even happened, but there was a child that was like the backbone of the Edmonton Oilers organization this last season, and he succumbed to uh, his illness. He was through, I believe, like Canada, 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 <laughs> Canada's Make-A-Wish Foundation, and he succumbed to his illness over the summer, and my thoughts are with the Edmonton organization as it hit them very hard um because they were close with him and it, it i just don't please don't ever move away from this make a wish is a beautiful thing you, even though this kid's life may have been shortened the last moments of it were probably you know every other kid's dream 
And, you know, he got to live it, whatever he wanted for those moments. And just remember that whatever he was going through, you guys tried to make it a little easier. You gave, right. him, support. You gave him feeling like normal for a minute. So kudos to the NHL and all of the athletes in the world that do these great things. Also kudos to John Cena, who seemed to broke a Guinness World Record with Make a Wish. So he seems to do that every time somebody breaks his record, he breaks. <laughs> He's like, gotta do it. <laughs> That's just how he is. It's very great that you know you see people in this world. So uh, hockey players, I see them in the community so much, doing so much, and thank you to all the teams that do it and all the community work um, that, you know, as part of the members of the hockey community, we're truly grateful for it as well. Yeah. Um, because the, the, the turnaround for that is, is amazing. Um, uh, also, I would like to thank all of our fans that watch our show. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, don't, please don't forget, you can check out our sponsor, Hockey Locker. Up there. 202 West Hart Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at hockeylockermilwaukee.com. Um, other than that, we will see you guys tomorrow. Again. <laughs> mm. um, me and John have to go have a post-show meeting. So this will be posted as soon as I get it done. Because <laughs> we have to make up a plan for tomorrow because we had plans. <laughs> All right. All righty. So see y'all later. <laughs>